Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. Tangent 2x equals tangent x. And we're going to be looking for all solutions, the real ones and also the complex ones. So that's going to be very comprehensive. We're going to be looking at this equation from different perspectives. I'll be presenting two methods and let's get started. Now this equation might very, uh, look very simple to most of you. I know you guys are very good at math. You're very capable. I can tell from all these beautiful comments and all the solutions you posted. They're amazing. But I wanted to show you, using this problem as an excuse, I wanted to show you a couple different fun things. So let's start with the first method. For my first method, I'm going to be using a formula for tangent 2x, which you should know if you're studying trigonometry. And if you haven't studied trigonometry, I should start. Now, why not? 2 tangent x divided by 1 minus tangent squared x. By using that formula, I can basically set up an equation. And let's use substitution. You know, substitution is my one of my favorite methods. So let's set tangent x equal to, how about u? OK, from here we get the following. 2u, that was on purpose, right? Divided by 1 minus u squared equals u. And now let's cross multiply this equation. And from here we get 2u equals u minus u cubed. Don't worry, it looks like a cubic, but it's very easy to solve. We can go ahead and put everything on the left hand side. u cubed plus u is equal to zero. Now the trivial solutions of this equation are kind of like, you know, very easy to find, but I want to talk about something that is not so trivial. So u cubed plus u is equal to 0, and let's go ahead and factor out a u here, and we get the equation in the factored form. From here, it's easy to say that u is equal to 0, but u is tangent x. So what does this imply? Uh, tangent x is equal to 0. Think about your unit circle. When sine x is equal to 0, and that happens on the x-axis, when x is either 0 or pi or 3 pi, in other words, you're talking about x equals n pi where n is an integer. So if x is any multiple of pi, then its tangent is going to be 0. Now, if you think about the original problem, go ahead and plug in pi, for example. Tangent 2 pi is 0. Tangent pi is 0. Uh, you can plug in any number from this interval, and you're going to get the solution. So that's the trivial solution, the real deal. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other factor, which is more interesting u squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, This gives us two solutions, as you know, and this is kind of like a way to introduce complex numbers to people who are new to them. So we're looking for a number whose square equals negative 1. It does not exist in the real world. So we invented a number system, which is very useful in many senses. Anyways, uh, u is i or u is negative i. So here's the question. Can we solve... This equation, no tangent of a real number is real. What about a complex result? So does that mean x is complex? So we're going to find out by looking at this equation from an Euler perspective. So I'm going to introduce, uh, well, not, not necessarily introduce, but I'll talk about the Euler's formula. Uh, it's very interesting, but we're going to do all, some fun manipulations as well. So here's the thing. When I kind of looked it up on Wolfram Alpha, tangent x equals i or negative i, it just says no solutions. But that didn't satisfy me, so I, I was kind of looking for something more interesting. Why are there no solutions? Maybe someone else can find a better explanation. A lot of times you guys are better than me at explaining things because I take too long. Anyways, tangent x equals i. I'm just going to take the case of i, and negative i is kind of similar. It's probably easier. Um, you can do something similar to that. So I'm going to write this as sine x over cosine x equals i. And then I would like to multiply both sides by cosine x, you know, the usual cross multiplication thingy. Now, if you've ever looked at uh, Euler's formula, it is just amazing. So the formula goes like this, cosine alpha plus i sine alpha equals e to the power i alpha. And this is beautiful, especially when you replace alpha with uh, when you replace alpha with pi over two or uh, pi or you know something like that. You get some very interesting results. 
Anyways, so I want to put my equation in that form, but when I compare these two equations, I have two problems. Let's go ahead and first put everything on the same side. So I'm going to write it as sine x minus i cosine x is equal to 0. What is the problem? First problem is I don't uh, have the sine with the i. I have i with cosine, so that's problematic. And the second problem is I have a minus sign. But both of these can be taken care of, and that's where the algebraic manipulations come in. So to switch the sine and cosine, I'm going to use the complementary angle. Is that what it's called? Yeah, complementary, look, or co the complement of x is pi over 2 minus x. I know some most folks write radians, so I'm going to use pi over 2. And for this one, I'll do the same thing. So in other words, cosine pi over 2 minus x. Uh oh, I wrote the cosine twice. Confused myself. So let me finish writing first. Okay, I got to slow down, slow down. Okay, we're not racing. So cosine of pi over 2 minus x is the same thing as sine of x because pi over 2 minus x and x are complementary angles, like 30 degrees and 60 degrees, or 40 degrees and 50 degrees. Okay, great. So I was able to bring the uh, sign with the i. Now I would like to get rid of the minus sign, but that's easy because a sign is an odd function. So sine of, you know, of, uh, negative alpha is negative sine of alpha. So I kind of have like a negative sine alpha here, by negating my angle, I'm going to be able to uh, get rid of the negative sign. But cosine is even, so even, odd, everything will be taken care of. If we replace pi over 2 minus x with x minus pi over 2, so we can safely say that, hey, this is equivalent to cosine of x minus pi over 2 plus i sine x minus pi over 2. So I, I, I got rid of the minus sign because I used the opposite of pi over 2 minus x. And this is equal to 0. And that's my cat if you heard the, the meow in the background. So this is my equation. And Euler said this is equivalent to e to the power i times x minus pi over 2 equals 0. And that's very, very problematic. Why? Because e to the power something can never equal 0, even for complex x values. And correct me if I'm wrong. Let's go ahead and talk about the second formula. And I'm also going to, well, did I say second formula? I meant second method. I'm not coming up with a second formula. Nope. Second method involves the following. You know, when we have an equation with tangent, we can say, look at it this way. Hey, if you have like tangent alpha equals tangent beta, you can safely say alpha equals beta plus some k times pi. So let's do the same thing. 2x equals x plus k pi. Subtract x, x equals k pi, and k is closed. Of course, this gives us only real solutions. The complex solutions, you have to do a little bit more. That's why the second approach only gives you the real ones. Is there any way to get the complex solutions from here? I do not know. Maybe you do. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see what it means. So we have y equals tangent 2x and tangent x. I graph them together. As you can see, at 0, at pi, at 2 pi, our graphs nicely intersect. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.